The home cooks have gathered everything they need to make Michael Bonaccini's signature scallop mousse. But Jennifer has forgotten a crucial ingredient. Forgot my eggs. I can't even breathe right now. Without eggs, my mousse cannot bind together. This is the worst case scenario. Jennifer, what's going on? Oh, I'm just having a bit of a panic attack. I'll be OK. This is not a time now to give up hope. Nerves, pressure can get the best of anyone. Coming up. Thank you. Oh. That's it. There you go. Keep an eye on the clock. Absolutely. And put out the absolutely best dish you could possibly put together. OK. That's all you can ask of yourself. Thanks, Chef. What's going on, Michael? Oh, boy. Jennifer has forgotten her eggs. Jennifer, she's probably going to end up with scallop soup. You will have 45 minutes to replicate Michael's stunning sea scallop mousse. Your time starts now! So David chose my sea scallop mousse to challenge the rest of the home cooks. I think that was a wise choice because it is a very tricky and technically difficult thing to do. It is about taking a beautiful sea scallop, still respecting the flavors of it, but transforming it into this delightful, delectable, delicious, soft mousse. You see the scallop here, you can't overwork it. Once you overwork and it gets too warm, your mousse is done. It's going to just fall as you bake it. Well, this is not really my style of cooking. I don't know. I've never done a mousse before, right? Let's get an egg white in there. Now they're starting to add their egg whites to the mousse, which will not only help bind, but it also helps lighten the mousse. Now, Michael, Jennifer doesn't have any eggs. Is it possible to recover from that misstep? It's a tough one to recover from. So she's got to be able to find that sweet point and do the absolute best she can. I need to figure out some sort of way that I'm going to bind together this sea scallop mousse. So we are going to get creative today. I happen to have flour that I grabbed from the pantry and butter. So I'm going to make a roux and just pray it dissolves enough so that the judges cannot taste flour in my sea scallop mousse. I'm truly being surprised with Jennifer. She had a total meltdown, and then she's still persevering. Lynn. Yes, chef. I see you've got some wonderful fish stock on here. And my lobster should be ready in about three minutes. No overcooked lobster for me. Yes, sir. Who do you think is going to have a really difficult challenge with this cook? Uh, Michael. He was asking me, how do you make a cream sauce? Did you give him any advice? There's only seven of us left, so I just as soon not be the most helpful person right now. <laughs> I'll let you carry on. Thank you. The mousse is coming together. Then I start inserting my lobster, and I make sure that the pieces are small enough that it'll be delicate. Cut into it. I want nice, hefty chunks of lobster that you can really sink your teeth into. Go big or go home. Again. Everything is going perfectly to plan. I got my timing right. Hopefully the moose cooks in time. Cody. Chef Alvin. This is something uh, that you've done often. I don't make a practice of doing things like scallop mousse, but it is very French. This is a lot of cream, and it's right in my wheelhouse. You put David up there. I did. And he did this to you? He did. Are you happy? I'm thinking I might thank him later. I have a lot of confidence in you. Do not disappoint me. Thank you, chef. So the sauce is as important as any component on this particular dish. What I'm looking for is obviously taste, thickness, the shine, and the overall amount of sauce on the dish. If they over-reduce the fish stock, it can make the sauce turn a little yellow in color. I want a nice white, white sauce. Ooh. I gotta hope and pray that that uh, mousse cooks properly down there. Sabrina has just put her ramekin into the oven now, and there's less than 11 minutes left on the clock. That is too tight for comfort. Michael is trying to take uh, the lobster claw out of the shell, but he seems to be struggling with it. Five minutes, you have five minutes left. When I look in the oven, and there's no plastic wrap on the ramekins. I guess it burnt off. I didn't get that steam trap to cook the mousse properly. And it's a big deal. So I just have to go with it. John's making me really nervous right now. 
This is a really refined dish, and I'm not sure he can make it through this one. My biggest concern is the doneness of my mousse. I might be a minute off. One minute! You have one minute left! Come on! One minute! A lobster's cooked. If they're not plating now, they're in trouble. They are, yeah. It's perfect. Yes. Moment of truth. Wow. So I check my mousse. It looks right to me. Hopefully it tastes okay. I'm down to the wire. My mousse comes out of the ramekin, blobs all over the plate. The only thing I could do is put this lobster on top of it, a couple chives, and hope for the best. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ten, ten! Woo! My dish is finished. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. We're now going to taste all seven of your dishes. Lynn, please bring up your scallop mousse. First time doing a mousse? Yes, chef. At first glance, I think it's a great replication. I see the lobster in the mousse. And you've done a great job with respecting the ingredient but the color of the sauce is a little more off-white than I had asked for. Whilst it has a nice, smooth consistency to it, I do find it just a little more firm than I would have liked. And that may be because you didn't add enough cream to it, or maybe it was just overcooked a hair, but from a taste perspective, spot on. Great job. Thank you, Chef. John, please bring up your dish. I can tell that it didn't set long enough in the ramekin. When I took it out, the plastic that was around the ramekin was burnt off. So right there, it just didn't steam it. I think you over whipped it. I think that was a mistake. And then when you have the friction of the blades hitting the delicate meat of the scallop, you add heat to it, and the scallops don't really relate to that. Damn. Very nice deshelling of the lobster claw. Unfortunately, I can't see any bits of lobster in there. Did you add the lobster in? Yes, I added the whole tail in the mixture. Well, I can hardly taste it. Did you uh, remove the cartilage? Well, I thought I got part of it out. I didn't know what you got out. You want me to eat it? Most definitely not. So, that's another error. I'm surprised because, you know, I see you improving. I see you getting away from the beef, but unfortunately for this dish, it's not your best work. Jennifer, please bring up your sea scallop mousse. At the beginning of this cook, you were in pieces. How are you feeling now? A lot better, and thank you for calming me down. I honestly didn't think I'd be able to recover from it. So you forgot your eggs? Yes, I did. What did you do to turn this around? I kind of made a bit of a roux. I tried to incorporate that into the scallops when I was whipping it. I think it was a very ingenious idea, but will it deliver the lighter texture? Jennifer, it did work. It is surprisingly light, moist. I really don't get the taste of any of that starchiness from the roux. It is a tad more dense than I would have liked, but the seasoning is spot on. The lobster is delicious. A lesson to everyone in resourcefulness and creativity, because this, as a replication, that's amazing. Thank you. Please go back to your station. I don't think Jennifer's a threat to me in this competition. I do believe, however, that some people don't take her as seriously as they should. She just doesn't give up.